Hi everyone, I'm Julie Lin and I'm going to talk you through my Malaysian kitchen experience. So I'm going to walk you through the watermelon noodle salad. This one is so easy and it's my take on a caribou salad, which is like a really fresh zingy salad that you have at the start of meals. I have just put some watermelon through it. Then just drizzle over the dressing. There's lots of palm sugar, lime juice, and sesame oil in there. It's so delicious. Now I'm using chopsticks here. You can obviously just do tongs or you can use a fork, whatever you have in the kitchen. And just make sure that all of the dressing coats all of that noodle salad. We're just gonna start layering that on there. And this has also got some amazing salty fish sauce. And it just balances out the dressing so well. It's amazing. This sort of food lends itself well to being a bit messy because it's all about the flavor rather than about how the dish is gonna look at the end of the day. Took honestly about two seconds and that's as good to go and now the best part so we've got these salty peanuts with also crispy shallots through it as well it couldn't honestly be easier that is the watermelon noodle salad we are on to carry i am and carry am just means chicken curry. So this one is so delicious and so easy to get together. I'm just going to pop these chicken pieces just in this dish here. We've got a couple of chicken thighs and we've also got a couple of chicken drumsticks as well. Now the sauce in here, you're going to be alarmed because it looks quite thick but it's supposed to be like that. It's got such a good high quality coconut milk in there that's so integral to this. It just makes it delicious and so hearty. So generously just cover those chicken pieces with the curry and that'll eventually melt down through the chicken during the cooking time in the oven. If you don't have a working oven, this will work really well also in a pot if we're roughly at about 15 minutes on a medium high heat and until everything is up to 82 degrees Celsius. You also have to add in 150 mils of water just to this curry and just mix it around before it goes in. Pop it in the oven and that'll make sure it's really nice and saucy when it comes out on the other end. I'm going to pop over it some tin foil. Then we're just putting it in a preheated oven for 20 minutes. Make sure that your oven is preheated at roughly about 180 degrees for this one. For plating up, I'm just going to do this really, really nice and easy. I'm just laying up one chicken thigh and one drumstick per person. And now just using this towel because it's still very hot. I'm just going to spoon over some of that chicken curry sauce, which is just amazing. Get some of those potatoes in there. They've soaked up all of the flavour. I am using our trusty pot of the shallots and peanuts just to garnish this as well. There we go. That is the Malaysian chicken curry. And for me, that is the most amazing part of the whole experience. Really shows how multicultural Malaysia is in one dish. We are moving on to the sambal pork. It's Malaysia's national condiment. I'm gonna layer up these pieces of pork just in a little dish, and then it just makes it so easy to get together. So in here is that gorgeous sambal. We have put some shrimps through there, but there's also some sweetness in there too. There's dried chilies, fresh chilies. Honestly, it's just the most amazing flavor you'll ever get. And again, a little goes a long way for this. So we're just putting some of the greens in here too. And I'm just gonna pop some foil over that. I'm just gonna pop this in a preheated oven, just at about 180 for 20 minutes and until it's up to 82 degrees Celsius and piping, piping hot. So I'm just going to pop a layer of this on the bottom and then I've got those really unctuous pork belly slices just in the middle. Oh my god, this is just melt in the mouth. Amazing. And you've got all of these amazing crispy shallots and peanuts in that box. So just use them, garnish them with whatever you want. And I think this will be so nice on top of that lovely sambal pork. It's beautiful. going to move on to the wok fried greens. In a wok I've just got some oil and I've heated that up to about a medium high heat just until you can see it's smoking. It's a good kind of gauge to see when it's ready. And now I'm just going to layer these in on the core side down just so they soak up all of the oil and all the flavour. Now just be careful that that doesn't spurt back at you when it is cooking. Be brave but not too brave. This is the sound that you want to get, that kind of like crackly smoky sound is perfect for this. That kind of charred bit on the greens is amazing because you kind of want that like smoky amazing brownness from it. And make sure these slightly more thicker parts are just cooked through and starting to get soft. And now add in that seasoning sauce. This is going to sizzle. There we go. Lovely. Just act really quickly at this point and just start turning everything in that sauce. Make sure that it soaks it all up completely. And you can see that's getting all really nice and caramelized around the greens. Now I'm going to take that off the heat, get that onto the surface. 
turn my walk off. You can smell it, it just smells incredible. Pile high, as they say. And then all of that juice in there is just so amazing. Don't lose any of that, it's perfect for the dish. And just pour that straight over the top. And she's beautiful, she's done, there we go. The lovely wok fried greens. Okay, we are on to our nasi goreng. So I've just got my rice here, I've got the cooking paste, my seasoning sauce and some cabbage. And then I've got a wok here just again with a little bit of oil in it and I've just got that till it's just about smoking so we can start frying off the paste. This has got, just got all the most amazing flavours in it. It's got dried chilies, it's got fresh chilies and it's all done for you. So that part is very easy. Make sure you get all of that in there. So, so much flavour, so good. And just fry that off for a little second and that'll just help all the shallots and stuff cook off. Just turn it in that oil. Now I'm gonna add in my rice. So this is jasmine rice, which is amazing for this because it's like slightly plumper grain. So it just soaks up all the flavor. It's really, really good. So pop all of that in there. And now I am just gonna pop in my cabbage. Pop that to one side. Just use a wooden spoon or any kind of utensil that you normally use for wok frying anything. And just break everything up so it gets really evenly coated in that nasi goreng paste. And let that fry off for a couple of minutes. Right, I'm gonna turn up the heat, let that get smoky. Now I've got this seasoning sauce, which is ketchup manis in here. I kind of recognize that word actually is derived from well, ketchup that we know here, but that's just the kind of sweet sauce word that you do in Malaysia for almost like a thick, treacly, sweet, dark soy sauce. And this is perfect for that. I'm just gonna pour that in, just put it all over. That sound is just the best. That means you know everything is going right and it's going so well. So as you can see, the rice has gone this like beautiful golden color. It's all bronze and I can smell the chilies. And as soon as you start to get like the cough and the chilies, that's when you know all the good stuff is happening. If you've got a small bowl roughly about this size in the house, that is perfect. And it just means that you can then shape your rice into these little ramekins. And then we're gonna turn it upside down and present it that way. Pat down with the back of the spoon. Grab your plate. And I'm just gonna put the plate upside down first and then flip the whole thing over. And there we have our perfect dome of rice. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of our uh, shallots and peanut mix just over the top, just for a bit of crunch. Again, if you don't feel like it, don't worry, but I personally just love a bit of crunch going on the top there. And that is your nasty green. We have come to the final part of the experience. This one, just eat it when it's just chilled and just come out of the fridge. It's so amazing. And whenever I think of Malaysia, I always think of mangoes because mangoes are so sought after. I feel like it would be the best thing to celebrate that with this mango and coconut panna cotta. It's just absolutely amazing and I hope you enjoy it. That is my full Julie's Kitchen experience and I really hope you enjoy it. This is just a taste of Peranakan cooking, which is Malaysian Chinese style cooking. And hopefully you will sign up for our next one. Thank you.